Dominic. <laughs> Let me call you a cab. You drive me yourself. Too. I prefer my men conscious. Thank you. For us to change. Francesco, get his keys. <coughs> Sorry, I'm calling a taxi for you. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go outside and just hail a cab, okay? the street like where I used to park there and then around the corner and that. Yeah. Then I phoned all the towing companies. Nobody has any idea where, where my car is. It's probably sitting in some chop shop in a valley next to mine. Yeah, probably. You know, if I had a dollar for every bone somebody found in a picnic they thought was human. Are we, uh... Yeah. Yeah, it's over there. Usually turns out to be a rib from somebody else's <laughs> picnic. <laughs> Now, that's what Vancouver needs in a big way. We need a good rib joint up here. Yeah, you gotta go to the States to get good ribs. All right, and that's pathetic. Yeah. Do you wanna do that? You wanna hop in the car, go down to Seattle, and catch a ball game, and get some ribs? I could really handle that. Yeah. Want to? Sure. You know, baseball's the only game where a defense controls the ball. What do you think about that? It's backwards. Well, yeah. it's all pitching. Hey, what's this? Hello. Yeah. All kinds of shit gets thrown around here. Uh oh. What's this look like to you, air check? Yeah. Boy, that is a shallow grave. Must have been buried pretty quick. An old skull. Decapitation, maybe. Gonna make identification a bitch. It's 50 yards from the road here. This is an easy place to dump a body, drag it, bury it. Yeah, Chick, it would be nice to know when this happened. You talked to the bug lady yet, Chick? Who? You won't get anything out of this, Skelton. The bugs made a meal of this one a long time ago. <laughs> bug lady? Jesus, look out. What? God oh, damn man, it. I'm Where allergic. I've got to carry a hypodermic around or I'm a dead man. Oh, You're bummer. kidding. You don't seem to bother me. You know, last summer, my, my, uh, I got stung and my hand went up like a flipper. A buddy of mine got stung on the end of his prick. Oh, he did <laughs> not. Yeah, oh, that's on. gonna hurt. Yeah, blew up like a baseball bat. He had to carry it around in a jar of ice water. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that Errol Flynn story. You heard that he died in Vancouver, right? So they performed the autopsy here. And when they, when they did the autopsy, they find he had venereal warts right on, a, on, his, on his dick. So they lopped him off. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fast souvenirs for the girl fair? Oh, yeah. He's the one who suckled him young. <laughs> uh, John Garfield uh, died of a heart attack with a young girl. Yeah, anyway, back there, Errol Flynn. <laughs> so now they're gonna ship the body back down to LA, right? So, what do they do? They get the scotch tape out and they scotch tape these warts right back on the other guy's turn. <laughs> oh, yes. What I want to know is how come your friend got stung on the end of his Johnson? Now he was nude sunbathing at Wreck Beach. And I swear, on my mother's grave, a true story. I just want to point out that uh, I pulled a lot of jumpers from underneath this bridge over the years, okay? I don't know, unless we find a pair of wings, it's a. Uh... A little ways from the bridge to be taking a dive. What do you say, Chick? You might find a pair of wings over there? Okay, okay, funny man. No, really, nobody buries a jumper. Now, this is a homicide. I mean, the head's missing. Yeah. And we had that red-headed torso hanging around for quite a while. Maybe they're related. Okay. It's all yours. Take it away. <laughs> Rule number one. There's no logic to what a person will do when they're trying to cover up a crime. There's a panic reaction factor that sets in. Yeah? You know that from personal experience, Leo? What the hell does that mean? Nothing, man. No. Just give me the gears, man. Well, pardon me, that isn't funny. And I don't like the inference. 
Talk to Francois. He wants you to call him at his brother's. You're supposed to ask for Lou. He'll call you back. I talked to him already. He asked me to check you out, see how you're doing. You mean check up on me? What'd you tell him? I'm not his boy. Really? Well, either that's bullshit, or you're deluding yourself. <laughs> or it's his way of getting you to check up on me, maybe. Maybe. You want to talk about Leon? You're straight to the point? Sure. There's nothing going on between him and me. Does that answer your question? I'm not stupid, Danny. I hope not. He's not running his mouth off about anything. If he wasn't running his mouth off, it would be Leon now, would he? I'd worry when he stops talking. Let me know when he stops talking. So, did we just, like, make an arrangement? I tell you and and you tell me kind of thing. Well, it doesn't hurt to trade information now and again. All right. All right. Oh, uh, so if you're going to check on me for Francois, I'll be home tonight. Just please go on and look in the lot for me. Because I know somebody told you. Okay, let me call you back. I spoke to Auto Theft. They gave me the runaround. Although they did seem fairly amused that you misplaced it. And there's a guy from Accident Investigation here to see you. Dominic? Sorry. You got a minute? Sure. Some homeless guy last night got clipped in front of our bar. Hit and run. I got the case. Uh, I was there last night. Yeah, I know. The bartender said you're shit-faced. You left around closing time. Anything you can tell me where you're driving? Tell you the truth, uh, Zach, I, I don't really remember. All right, where's your car? I'm looking for it. It's around. I'll find it. What about the guy that got hit? It's up in the air right now. Broken leg. Internal bleeding, possible brain damage, and he wasn't that healthy to begin with, so. I don't know what to tell you. I guess I keep looking, I'll find the car, we'll take a look at the car, and everything will be just, uh... Are you talking to anybody else? Yeah, there were ten cops in the bar. It's a big problem for everybody. Yeah, okay. You know, if I were you, I'd be looking for my car. Thanks for letting me know. It's an official investigation. People are all over it, being outside our bar and all. Okay, Zach, thanks for letting me know. I'll be in touch. Helen? Can you close the door? Could you call and check on the condition of a hit-and-run victim? Accident occurred behind the, uh, behind our bar there. Okay. Dominic. Oh, yeah, we probably should. He told me yesterday he'd be here. <sighs> Look, let's just go ahead without him. I got an appointment. Here's what we know. From the hips, it looks like this is the skeleton of an adult male. There is an old healed wrist fracture, so that could be a clue to his identity. That's all we know? No, that's not all. But the skull's missing, so we're out of luck on the obvious dental evidence. Plus, it's hard to determine race. How about the skull? Was that a decapitation? No, no tool marks. Probably an animal took it. It happens a lot. There was no ID in any of the clothes. Oh, that plays into robbery homicide. It's hard to determine a definite cause of death, especially without a skull. Thanks for the hot tip. Sorry, I'm late. Morning. Sonny's going to take over from here. i got to get to the university. Lecture? No, research. Research on what? 
We found several interesting Here. fractures. As you can see, there are two different types. Fractures to the left femur and the right tib and fib. These are consistent with a blow. You mean somebody hit him hard with a weapon, like a baseball bat? Why not? If it was hard enough, could it have, um, let's say, ruptured an artery? The guy bleeds to death? Possibly. The second fracture is a dislocation. Essentially, the bones of the lower legs were forced up past the bones of the upper legs. Maybe somebody threw him off the bridge. Sure, we see these fractures when someone falls or jumps from a great height, lands on their feet. If it was high enough, that could be the cause of death. The feet and legs take the initial shock. It carries on up through the spine. A couple of vertebrae are badly fractured. See, I, for sure, I would say this would be a suicide, except for he's buried that way. Hey, thanks. Hey, it's another good one. Did you hear? We got a time of death. Yeah? Yeah, some poor bastard in forestry out at the university. He sat down and he counted all the rings on the roots growing through this skeleton. Brilliant. Yeah, the guy died 12 months ago. We got uh, missing persons checking into the time frame. All right. Skeleton, when found, was wearing uh, denim jeans, T-shirt, and a plaid work shirt. All Canadian manufacturer. That may help with the profile. Yeah, and most guys wouldn't be caught dead wearing plaid. Well, most guys don't have your sartorial sense, Leo. So few do. D. I called the police about that hit and run. They were pretty cagey about it. They said that nobody was killed, so why does the coroner's office need to know? Because the guy got hit may end up a fatality. We want to stay on top of it. I know, that's what I said, but they just told me that he was in intensive care. Any statement? He's in and out of consciousness. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You wanted to talk to me? Yes, I do. Shut the door. Sergeant Regan tells me you're being questioned about a hit and run outside the police bar the other night. Yeah, I won't lie to you, Jimmy. Anything in it? Well, uh, I told Zach what I can remember. I look, uh, I can't find my car. I don't know how I got home, but I'm dealing with it, Jimmy. It's going to be okay. I swear to God. Sit down. I'm not asking for my ass to be covered here, okay? No one's offering, okay? Do you mind telling me what Regan's interest in this actually is? It surprises you that you take no prisoner's attitude has made you a few enemies? No. So what about this unnamed enemy, then? Is it a conflict for you, or what? Linda Salwin. She was the lawyer that represented the couple of the retirement home that burned down. I remember her. But all of a sudden, she's developed a conscience? No, no. More along the lines of she hates your guts. How the hell would she get involved in something like this? She's representing the homeless man that was hit. Pro bono. And she's all over Regan to keep tabs on the situation. Dominic, if he dies, it's hit and run. Crim Ned causing death. She'll sue you. She'll sue me. She'll sue the entire coroner's office. And Regan won't be unhappy to hang it on you. Okay, thanks for the warning. I never really realized how many people actually go missing in Vancouver. It's unbelievable. Mom goes out for a pack of smokes, never comes back. Boss doesn't show up for work. It's, it's crazy, you know? One, one minute somebody's expected somewhere, the next minute, gone. Puff of smoke. Speaking of missing persons, what's happening with your brother? I haven't heard a word from him. Has he been staying with you? No, Ange, I'm not his keeper. Come on. I told you about him, didn't I? I warned you. Hey, Leo. Take a look at this here. About a year ago, this guy, Lamont Dixon, he leaves his girlfriend's place in the West End, heads over the Broad Street Bridge to go visit his ex-wife and kids in Kitsilano. Hey, that's quite a hike. That's a couple of miles anyway. Yeah, well, he was fresh out of prison, maybe wanted the exercise. I don't know. Anyway, about 11 o'clock, the ex-wife calls up the cops, says he's harassing her. Was there a restraining order? I don't see anywhere. In... No, I don't see anything about a restraining order. Anyway, the neighbors, same night, June 1st, said they heard the ex-wife's boyfriend, Rocky. Hey. Now, there's your suspect. Any guy named Rocky goes to the head of my list. Good. I need a prison record, too. <laughs> so, uh, he shows up there. He starts arguing with Lamont, right? The cops show up. They figure it all out. Lamont splits. The next morning, his girlfriend, Trina, from the West End, she calls missing persons, reports him missing. He never came back. Rocky did it. I'm laying odds. Let me see that. 
They found the uh, skeleton about six blocks from uh, where the ex-wife lives. Missing persons reported it as a possible homicide at the time, but they didn't have enough evidence to charge anybody, so... His girlfriend says that when he left, he was wearing working clothes here. Blue jeans and a plaid shirt. Yeah, it sounds like our boy. Hey, wish they could all be that easy. Look at this, Reagan stole my goddamn cup again. I'd wash that really good. Thing. <laughs> I just bought it. Well, come on on board. We'll go for a little spin. Huh? What you get this for? I'm gonna hole in the ocean to pour your money into. Hey, so's a hole in your arm. <laughs> if you spend it how you want to spend it, I spend it how I want to spend it. So, uh, you want a drink? It's a sample. It's pure. I tested it. Huh. What's the deal? We're holding 50 keys. If everything goes smooth, then we get an unlimited supply. So what's the turnaround time for you? Uh, it depends on the money. But it's not a fun. I need cash. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it's going to take me about a week to put that together. Forget it. They want to do this tonight. They're not going to do it at all. I, th I thought you understood that, Leon. Now my ass is hanging out on the line. If I don't get the glue together... Would you slow down? I'll make some phone calls, okay? Leave this with me. People are going to want to do a taste test. I want to deal with the snark bullshit before I make any deals. All right. Pod problem. <laughs> you know, Danny, this is what it's all about. I'm going to do all right with that. <laughs> Look at, let's just think about this for one more minute here. Okay. Okay? This guy really got smacked. You're going to notice. I know you. You're not just going to hit a guy and then keep going. And how do you know that? How in the hell do you know that if I don't know that? Whether I hit the guy, didn't hit the guy, it's not really the point here. He said, I don't remember. I just don't remember. Let's take a walk. Okay, you came out here. You're looking for your car. Where do you usually park? Well, I usually park right here, but like, the bar was unusually full of people that night, eh? Mm -hmm. Where was the guy stuck? Down at the mouth of the alley. Okay, which way's home? What's your usual route? Well, I come out of here, I go down to the mouth of the alley, I take a right, a right, and I'm on the viaduct. Okay, he's stepping out off the sidewalk to the right here. You're looking left into traffic. And look at the pavement. Why? No rubber on the road. If it were it did, it didn't even hit the brakes, else the brakes are soft. Oh, I just had my brakes done. Okay, I got to talk to some other people. What, police? That's a police bar. It's full of members. You know, they'll be closing ranks on me. I've, uh, I've made a few enemies uh, over the years. Yeah, a few. You let me know you remember anything. Okay, thanks. The police were supposed to tell me before he was released. I was supposed to have some warning. But they didn't call? No. One minute I'm in the kitchen up to my elbows in dishes. The next I hear my youngest screaming because Lamont's in the yard. Why, they were afraid of him? They had good reason. He could be violent. Lamont's in your yard. Then what'd you do? I called the police. Now, what about your uh, boyfriend, Rocky? Did you call him, too? Yeah, I called him. He knew of uh, Lamont being violent? Yeah, he knew Lamont was violent. I told him. Okay, so Rocky came over, and then what happened? Lamont's outside, yelling, trying to get the kids to come out. He and Rocky start to push and shove, throw some punches. And the cops show up. Lamont leaves. Cops leave. No charges, nothing. Well, what about Rocky? What'd he do? Yeah, he said he was going to go get cigarettes around the corner. He got in his truck and he left. You know how long he was gone, you remember? About an hour, I guess. You give any reason why he took so long to just go around the corner? Ask him yourself. I don't see him anymore. 
Listen, I gotta tell you, if this skeleton turns out to be Lamont, you become a murder suspect. Now, if Rocky said anything to you at all about what happened, you gotta let us know right now. He told Lamont that if he ever came around here again, he'd bury him. The prison x-rays are on the left. The wrist fracture is identical to those of the skeletal remains on the right. Our plaid man is Lamont. Thanks, Doc. Guess our prime suspect is Rocky. Hey. Now, these leg fractures in the femur. Mm -hmm. OK. Above the knee on the one. Mm -hmm. And uh, halfway up the calf on the other. These are front mm -hmm. force impact blows, right? That's right. OK, so if it was a beating, then this one. This was done with a bat or, a, say, a pipe. That'd be a hell of a swing to break clean like that, wouldn't it? I suppose so. Mm. I understand you're in a bit of a situation. Yeah. You don't seem particularly upset. I don't. No. On sight, I'm freaking. You know, if I hit this guy, it's like all over for me. I said that, I don't even, I don't even know what's gonna happen to me. Anyway, later. See ya. I was pretty shook. I remember finding a good stash of cans behind the bar. Yeah? Francesco puts them out for me sometimes. Francesco? I know Francesco. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Would you uh, spot the driver of the vehicle? If you could see him again? Could you spot the vehicle? I, I think somebody came up to me when I was on the ground. He said something. Yeah, what do you Asked if I was all right. That's about all I remember. All right. Do I look familiar to you? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. What the hell do you think you're doing coaching my client? This is more than inappropriate, don't you think? I'll just come by and see if he's all right. OK, buddy, I'm going that way. So uh, you get better recover, all right? Be nice to the nurses. What were you doing? You had no official business being there. I'm a citizen. He's a citizen. I have every goddamn right to be there. Come on, Dom. She said it sounded like you were coaching oh, him. Oh, for Christ's sakes, I'm not trying to cover my ass here. I told you that already. If I did it, I want to know. And if I didn't do it, I want the right to clear my name. Is that so hard to understand? Look, just don't you worry about it, Jimmy. Okay, I'm not going to hide behind anybody. I never have, and I hope to hell I never will. But if you think I'm going to resign before there's a decision here, forget about it. I'm still doing my goddamn job. It says here you broke some guy's legs and did 18 months. What was that all about? I ain't ashamed of it. Prick raped my little brother. I should have done more. I should have made sure he was pissing in a bag the rest of his life. Oh, so you're a white knight, huh? Ride into town, kick some ass, do your stuff. Everybody stands up and cheers for you, is that it? Well, somebody had to do something. You guys didn't do dilly squat about it. What about your ex-girlfriend, Sylvia? You wanted to protect her, too? I've answered these questions before. Well, you're going to have to answer them again, Rocky, because now we've got a body. Things are a lot more serious for you. I didn't kill him. If I did, you'd know about it. I'd take a plea, do a bit, and be damn proud of it. Real hero. OK, tell us what happened the night Lamont came over. Sylvia called, and I went out there to help her. You were over there? Lamont shows up, then what you do? I started to try to talk to him. The cop showed up and he left. Talk, huh? Rocky, you don't look like the kind of guy who does talking too much. What happened next? Then I went to buy cigarettes. Come on, Rocky. You were gone almost an hour. You went to buy smokes? We got a body now, Rocky. I 
follow Lamont. I wanted to make sure he wouldn't go back to her place. Where'd you go? I followed him down her street to Cornwall. Soon as I was really sure he wasn't going to go back, I turned around, went and got smokes. The police report says Lamont didn't leave till about a quarter after 11. The clerk at the convenience store says you showed up for your smokes around midnight. So you want me to believe that the guy was walking around for 45 minutes to go a couple of blocks? He was shit-faced. He walked around a block a couple of times like he was going to head back. I think he saw me and thought twice about it. All right, so you're following Lamont around. You follow him to the bridge? No, definitely not. I told you I went home. I ain't answering any more questions. You guys want to charge me, then do it. Otherwise, I'm walking out of here. See you later. I'm talking to you again, Rocky. Next time, call first. You guys scared the shit out of my old lady. <laughs> Who's that? Hey. When'd you get in? This morning. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So I call you a couple of times, you guys were always on the job. It's the way it is. How was the trip? Good. Good. Yeah? Hey, I gotta, I gotta go. Uh, so I'm really I'll call you when I get off. I'm gonna catch up with you, too. Okay. Yeah, Angela. Here, have a look at this. See if you can shake something loose on those two jokers that held up the speedy cash, will you? Okay. Oh, Leo. Where the hell are you exactly on this alcohol killer case? Oh, that's nothing but a dead end. Then why is Patricia Da Vinci asking for our paperwork on it now? Well, if I know. You know, that woman's becoming as big a pain in the ass as her ex. Shannon, get him down here. I'm over in Kits under the bridge. So you're thinking somebody clipped him with a vehicle and that's what caused the clean breaks to the calf and the thigh? Yeah, because the, uh, the fractures are more consistent with being hit by a car. The suspect Rocky was driving his truck that night, said he followed Lamont right up to the edge of the bridge. Let's say that Rocky gets it into his head to save Sylvia from Lamont. Hey, the world's a little lighter without Lamont walking around in it. So he follows Lamont and he hits him with a truck. It's Monday night, round about midnight. Streets are pretty quiet around here. So Rocky takes Lamont out. Nobody sees it. And Rocky's thinking ahead. He knows he's going to be a suspect. I got you. So he pitches him off the bridge thinking he'll make it look like suicide. Yeah, well, that would explain the other fractures. But why does he bury Lamont's body? Well, he looks over the bridge, the body's in plain view. He doesn't want it to be found, at least not right away. So he drives down to the clearing, drags the body over to where it is, and throws some dirt on it. Yeah, but why on this side? It's going the other way. Well, because look, there's offices over there, there's condos over there. The body would be found a lot quicker. You know, it's pretty quiet with the traffic. He could have pulled a UE really easily. Is Rocky still have his truck? Didn't say. Okay, what about the, the two uniforms that broke up the fight between Rocky and Lamont there? Did you talk to them? They corroborated Rocky's story. Lamont left and Rocky went in the house. 
You don't have copies of their notebooks hanging around still. Yeah, it's down at the station. Why? What do you want it for? Well, you know, if there's negligence here or causing a, a preventable death, then, you know, someone's going to have to be told. What did you do with your truck, Rocky? Some guy bought it. We'd like his name. I don't remember his name. Some guy out of the paper. You told us you were following Lamont around in your truck. Yeah. Well, Lamont turns up with a couple of busted legs like somebody drove into him. Did you say you were following a bit too close? I didn't run him down. I want to see your goddamn truck, Rocky. I want you to see my truck. Then you'll know I'm telling you the truth. Call more vehicles. It's registered. Thanks, Helen. Hey, Zach, come on. Take a seat. I take it you remembered something else you wouldn't ask me all the way down here. Oh, no, no, this is another matter completely. No, I have a pair of officer's notebooks regarding a, a domestic dispute some other guy we're looking into. But anyway, I was looking at... The, well, here, you take a look. Uh, uh, shortly after they left the uh, scene of the domestic, they uh, take an action report there. It's on the next page at the uh, Brasserie Bridge, right? Yeah, well, this is over a year old. Nobody got hurt. What's the problem? What's the problem? This woman, Laura Gladwin or whatever, she's driving along. She jumps five lanes of traffic, loses control of her vehicle, and goes right up onto a sidewalk and smacks into a pedestrian handrailing on the bridge. It happens more often than you might think. She never explained why it happened. Okay, I want to know what all this is about. Why the sudden interest in this? Sudden interest? Look, I haven't retired and I haven't been convicted of anything, not that I know of, not quite yet anyway. So I'm just doing my job here. You got a problem with that, Zach? You want to jerk me over some bullshit matters. That's what this is all about. You're trying to bury me in paper. I'm reading the report. I'm wondering to myself, what the hell happened here? How the hell should I know? It's a routine accident. Routine? She wasn't given a breathalyzer. Is that not routine anymore? Okay. She jumps five lanes and smacks into a railing and no breathalyzer? You're going to go to war with me over this kind of bullshit. Okay. I re-interviewed the waitress and the bartender from the cop bar. They both remember asking you for your keys the night of the hit and run, but you wouldn't give them up. So we're going to see a lot more of each other. You know what? I'm looking forward to it, too. Me, too. Hey, guys. Hey, Jake. You got something for us? Yeah, a lot of possibility with the clothes. I didn't find anything with the shirt, but if you look below the knee on the left leg and the inner calf of the right leg, you can see black scuff marks. And these line up almost perfectly with the two leg fractures on the victim. You know, could that have been from the bumper of a truck? Depends on the truck, how high the bumper sits. Anything else about the jeans? I recovered some paint chips and I'm having the lab look at them. Paint chips? Yeah. We're investigating a situation that occurred that night that you had that accident on the uh, Barastri Bridge Cape Dixie. Do you recall that night very well, Tom? Oh, a little bit. I was in shock afterwards. It's been hard to piece it all together. No, no, no. Actually, it's not your accident that I'm directly interested in. I'm just wondering if you saw anyone or anything unusual on the west side of the bridge before your accident that night. I'm sorry, but I can barely remember the accident itself. You see, here's my problem. Somebody hit a pedestrian that night. Hit and run. And uh, to locate possible witnesses has been a nightmare. So you didn't recall anything unusual? No, I don't think so. Do you remember where you'd been that night? Yes, I had dinner with a client. Oh, with a client? A lot of drinking? No, I don't drink. I'm allergic to alcohol. I get a histamine reaction. Oh. Okay, so you're driving along, you're sober. Much traffic? No, the streets were pretty deserted. Nothing else? No, I'm sorry. Okay, well, you tried. Mm. I really appreciate you coming in. By the way, what happened uh, with your car? It was a write-off. Oh, no. Yeah. Let's get back here. Would you take one of my cards, and if you remember anything at all, call me, and that's my cell. Leave a message. I certainly will. Seizure here is very simple. It's a gray BMW 1996. Owned by Laura Gladwin. Don't know nothing. We know. 
Let me just check with auto theft, because I think they can go down and look through your receipts and see if they come up with anything themselves. You don't have to do all that. It's right over here. Thank you. This is it? Yeah. Keep it covered. Yeah, I can turn a few dollars on this. Pretty clean, huh? Is this how it came in? Oh, hell no. I practically rebuilt the whole front end. Beautiful job. Thanks. What'd you do with the parts it took off? Right there. Now, taking a look at the left side of the bumper here, that's uh, consistent with the report where it says she hit the pedestrian railing. That's crushed. Yeah, what about the uh, damage on the uh, hood? Well, the dent is uh, from something soft. There's no crush or wrinkles in it. How would something like that happen, sir? A body. A body? Good. Can you tell me about the uh, grill again, Chick? Well, on the left, uh, you got the crush where she hit the railing. Right. And on the right, you got an indentation here, see? Yeah, and that's directly below the damage on the hood. That's right. Okay, now how does this work for you, okay? She's driving along this drunk. He steps right in front of her, right into his lane. She hits him on this part of the uh, grill right here. Now she panics. Hard left hand down. She's out of control. She's heading this way. He bounces off the hood. He goes over the railing that way. And she continues to the point where she makes contact with that pedestrian railing. Does that work for you, Chick? Sounds like it could happen. What about you, Zach? We found your car. That was a nice deal you did that junkyard guy. Is there something against the law about selling a car? Not unless it was used in the commission of an offense. And what offense are we talking about now? Well, where do we start? Hit and run, manslaughter, let's not exclude murder. Tell me something. Why are you talking to me about these things? You're coroner. Because it's about a death, and that's what coroners do. Look, I didn't see anybody, I didn't hit anybody. I was going too fast, I lost control, and I hit the guardrail. I mean, do you really think I would call the police if I'd hit somebody and was trying to cover it up? Well, maybe you would if there was no body. So where are we now? I didn't hit anybody. I call the police, they investigate, they don't find a body. We just did. A year later? Do you know how many people drive over that bridge every single day? Have you talked to everybody who's had an accident on that bridge? Have you ever testified under oath at an inquest? If that's what you have to do, go ahead. Call one. You two through? Yeah, for now. She's all yours. This is Detective Leary. Homicide. Here's a photograph of your bumper. Another photograph, this one, of the hood of your car. Here's a photograph of the jeans of our victim. I want you to take a real close look at these, because see this here? The seam on these jeans matches up with this mark here on the bumper of your car. And the pocket of these jeans matches up with that mark on the hood of your car there. Those are as good as fingerprints. Millions of people wear jeans. So what are you saying? That you ran into somebody else who was wearing a pair of jeans? I don't think so. Here's a picture of a paint chip on the jeans. This is the paint chip from your car. This is both of them. They match. How many gray BMWs do you think are out there? I'm guessing probably quite a few. But only one that was originally blue from the factory, which was repainted gray by the owner who then sold it to you. Now that we've established that it's definitely your car and you agreed with the police on the scene that night that you were, in fact, behind the wheel of the car, there's just one little bit that uh, is kind of confusing to me and I think my partner here, too. What's that? Well, our victim, Lamont, he suffered two fractured legs and crushed vertebrae. Now, I'm, I, I'm just wondering how the hell he had the presence of mind to drag himself from underneath the bridge 50 yards up to a piece of brush, dig a hole and bury himself in it. Yeah, that's a hell of a feat. I don't know, Leo. Maybe you ought to be talking about charges here. Well, it was an accident. If she'd have reported it, it'd have been a driving violation. Yeah, but she didn't report it. She covered it up. 
So what's that make it? A case of manslaughter? My take is that you panicked. When you started thinking about what you had to lose. You lost it anyway. We, uh, found your car. Where? It was up by Access Road on Whistler Mountain. What's the damage? Yeah, you're gonna need a new ignition. <sighs> Sorry to disappoint you. Hi. Remember me? Ah. Yeah. What's this? It's a friend of mine down at Social Services. She'll make sure that you got a nice place to stay when you get out of here. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> 